Hello, and welcome back to Math and Tea, the show where we talk math and drink tea. I'm your host, recovering from a cold, Professor Joseph Van Hei. In this episode, I want to talk about Jordan Ellenberg's book, How Not to Be Wrong, The Power of Mathematical Thinking. This book just dovetails so nicely in with the previous two. Kathy O'Neill was talking about the social impact of algorithms and models. Nate Silver was talking about the statistics that go behind algorithms and models. And Jordan Ellenberg is talking about the mathematical assumptions that undergird the attempt to even build an algorithm or a model. Should this model be linear? Is there any reason to believe that it should? Does this phenomenon that we're attempting to model even exist in the first place? And if it does, is there any reason to believe it should continue existing? These are the kinds of questions that Ellenberg asks. It really is a book from a logician's perspective. Questioning assumptions is the refrain throughout the entire book. Let me illustrate this with an example that comes up early in the book, the Laffer curve. That's Laffer as in L-A-F-F-E-R, not Laffer as in ha ha ha. The Laffer curve is a theoretical curve that's supposed to connect the tax rate on the x-axis with government revenue on the y-axis. Now, if the tax rate is zero, then, well, clearly there's no revenue coming in. Zero tax rate, zero revenue. On the other hand, if the tax rate is 100%, then, well, no one's going to be working because no one's going to make any money, so the government revenue is still zero. And it's somewhere in between that we expect there to be something positive. That's where we live. Now, if you look at the way the Laffer curve typically gets drawn, it looks like some sort of downward-facing parabola. You know, something like that. Why should we assume that the Laffer curve actually looks like that? Economics is complex, really complex. It's entirely possible there's some point of taxation where an entire industry just goes from being viable to unviable or vice versa. So the Laffer curve just could jump wildly around that point. There's no reason to assume it just goes like that and then like that. For that matter, taxation is really complicated itself. There's so many different things you could tax and tax at different rates. So why are we using this simple one-dimensional model to model a multi-dimensional phenomenon? And yet, if you pay attention to politics, you'll probably see someone claiming to know the exact impact of any given tax cut or tax hike. They'll claim to know exactly what the Laffer curve is like and moreover, exactly where we are on it. We can base huge amounts of our economic policy on a model that's, well, at best, poorly reasoned, and at worst, just completely wrong. Now, to their credit, it's usually not the economists who are doing this, it's usually the politicians. How Not to Be Wrong is a catalog of examples like this. Rather than telling you how to actually do something, it's providing a warning, like a big neon sign flashing over your head saying, hey, you probably don't want to oversimplify these things, or, you know, you shouldn't let your conclusions get ahead of what the math can actually say. The world is ultimately a complex place, and we want to make sense of it, but Ellenberg warns us that we should be careful as we're doing so. He's trying to help us to not be, well, how not to be wrong. Now, in the book, he works through five main areas. Linearity, inference, expectation, regression, and existence, offering a variety of often witty examples to back up his ideas. His chapter titles include such gems as Dead Fish Don't Read Minds, Are You There, God? It's Me, Bayesian Inference, and Does Lung Cancer Make You Smoke Cigarettes? And while he's talking about all these algorithms and models, he's also going through some surprisingly interesting and unexpected mathematics, everything from conic sections to Hamming codes to Girls in Completeness Theorem. I did notice as I went through this that there's a fair amount of overlap between this book and Nate Silver's book. For instance, both of them spend a good amount of time talking about Bayes' theorem on statistical inference. So, what did I think of this book? Well, I'll give this one a conditional review. If you've already read O'Neill's book or Silver's book and you liked it, you'll probably really enjoy this one too. As I indicated before, it's a really good complementary book. It goes into more and different details on the sort of topics that all three of them are interested in. But, on its own, okay, I hate to say this because I kind of know Ellenberg, but I didn't find that this book was really that cohesive. There's a feeling of wandering directionless from topic to topic. Now, some of those topics can be really fun, like the section on numerology was perfect but it just doesn't all come together in a satisfying way, the same way that Kathy O'Neill or Nate Silver's book did. So, 
good book, but not the first one I would recommend to people. Anyway, that's all for now because uh, I'm out of tea again. Bye.